All right. I think we are pumping live. How you doing today? How's it going your way? Hope things are going well. Thanks for coming back. If you're new, thanks for joining. My name is Trey Gallagher. Um, this is my art stream. I'm usually out here on the weekends, Saturday nights, Sunday evenings, usually one of those two. Sometimes Sunday mornings, but welcome. If you don't know me, I am an illustrator, concept artist, educator, and um, painter. So if you don't know my work, you can check me out at TreyGallagher.com or on Instagram, Instagram at Trey Gallagher. And uh, if you're on Facebook, you can check me out at Art by Trey Gallagher. So um, thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. Take a little sip of my beverage. Hope you get yourself a beverage. Um, if you're here hanging out, you're welcome to draw along. If you got some work to do of your own, pull up a chair. Maybe put on some music, keep me on in the background. I don't play music on this channel because I kind of think you all want to listen to whatever it is that you want to listen to. So you don't need to hear my my music per se. But you can turn me down or up or listen to something in the background, whatever you want. I got some hip-hop going today for myself. Um, but let's hang out. Let's spend some time together and let's get some work done and have some fun. Today it's tea. Sorry about that. One more of those. Rose Puchon is what we're drinking today, by the way. I don't know what you're having, but my wife turned me on to this, and I have to say, um, unlike other rose teas, uh, this tea is delicate and kind of citrusy with notes of rose, but it's not too dry and stuffy the way you think of rose so it's it's nice got a little bump to it too with some caffeine so keep us our dads rolling <laughs> hope you're doing well out there um see how our stream health is doing here looks like we're doing all right kids probably running his minecraft right now so but it looks like we're doing okay yeah, this is tasty. All right, so um, what are we doing today? Well, lately we've been kind of working on the Shepherd Project, which I've been sharing here in stream and kind of developing. But um, last time we did a uh, asset design for a staff for our Shepherd, but this time I want to kind of you. We've been hitting that concept for a while and working it and it's been fun, but I kind of just want to do something a little different. Just do a one-off here and do something just not on topic or not following anything from a previous stream. So I thought today I was kind of inspired uh, recently to want to do some uh, mythological characters. And I thought today I was kind of started sketching around with um, a Medusa. So I thought I might try to do something. This is just preliminary, kind of out of my head. What do I know about Medusa? How would I begin to describe her body language? Um, and, you know, when you draw things, it's no better way to learn than drawing. Drawing is a fantastic way to learn. When you have to describe its form, you, you have to understand it better. And that means resolving issues that you may not be thinking of at first just out of memory but the more you draw the more you realize like oh what does happen there what's going on with that arm how does the arm work in that particular position and if you really are in, lost in the weeds you have to do some reference and you have to pull some images up of people to help you it could be for anatomy it could be for um construction of something. And I like mythological characters, of course. Um, Ray Harryhausen, Clash of the Titans, 
for me, growing up as a kid, reruns on Saturday, <clears throat> Saturday matinee or uh, Saturday afternoon movies um, on TV, Channel 31, they, they played Clash of the Titans over and over and over. So uh, I loved that film. Um, the early sort of stop motion animation stuff was fun. And for its time, it seemed incredibly real. A little bit, you know, stop motion-y, I guess, would be the right word. But, uh, but still the idea that these sort of mythological characters could seem lifelike and move and, and have lighting on them that looked amazing and realistic was just incredible and sort of filled your imagination with all kinds of um, dreams and ideas. So it was a lot of fun. I, I must have watched that a million times in reruns. And before that, uh, when it was on video, going to the video store, um, walking the aisles, looking at movies that you'd want to rent again. And of course, Clash of the Titans was always going to be in that pile. Um, <laughs> um, all kinds of great movies uh, from those days. The late 70s, early 80s, and just just being like making the decision of what you're going to bring home. It's just incredible. It's like a whole nother life ago. Now we can just dial it up. So I thought, just for fun, I was like, oh man, I love those old characters and creatures. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to just do something today, just do a drawing. Whatever we come up with. I don't have too much, too much high expectations. I'd say what I'm doing here is like preliminary drawing, preliminary sketching. This is just out of the head. And that's good and bad. I mean, no, no reference here, just... One of the things I remember, I was super impressed by Clash of the Titans at the time and seeing this Medusa was how good of a shot she was with her arrow. Being this kind of creature that was snaking around and twisting and turning and all the obstacles, that it was amazing she got a shot off at all. I'd be hitting the pillars and everything else in the background. But it was pretty amazing. I mean, she didn't hit him, obviously, um, Perseus, but it was even amazing that she could get a shot off at all. I was thinking, that environment is crazy. It's dark, whatever. She seems so wobbly. How could she hold still? But there was something cool about that. I don't know if it was her kind of snaky way that she moved, or if it was sort of her half-body, half-creature. Um, this is really cool. So I'm just doing some preliminary drawing here, just, just kind of having fun. Hope you're having a good week. Hope all your creative projects are going well. We weren't on last week. Just had a lot going on. So do you make her more witch-like? Do you make her more beautiful? I think 
what I loved about the Ray Harryhausen one was that she was like this old craggly witch. We'll see what I do here. I don't know. Got to pull her proportions in a little bit. working on some sketch paper here. Figured she'd have some sort of kind of interesting jewelry. Figuring she's gonna give her a little bit of a, a navel, and then this is where I want to start maybe fading things down a little bit. Some scales, probably, maybe some sort of snake belly would be like maybe these larger segments along the middle here. Gonna have to be a little bit bigger scales, maybe. Now the little ones don't seem <clears throat> quite right. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little bit of that seasonal gunk. 
haven't had many allergies much growing up, but I am noticing I'm getting a few more as I get older. She's not a happy creature, so she'll be frowning of some sort. It's kind of got the sinister looking eyes. Of course, our little snake eyes up here. kind of going into a mesh. Who wants to draw all those snakes? I do. But the trick is, how can you do it without actually having to draw the snakes? Therein lies the trick. So she's going to have the snakies all around the head, kind of slithering around. Give her kind of these high cheekbones. Bit of an angular kind of nose. She looks a little haggard now. Not much sure what she would be wearing earring wise. Would she be wearing earrings? I don't know. Seems a little moot at this point. But maybe she still perceives herself as beautiful. chat is open. If you feel like uh, lobbing in some convo, I'm up for it. I like to keep the window open. If you just want to quietly hang back and do your own thing, that's okay too. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks for swinging by. Okay, so kind of kind of dig what's going on there a little bit. Kind of like the idea of this necklace. I'm not sure what what this would be, but something kind of heavy and ornamental. I'm not totally up on my mythological uh, jewelry designs per se. So I'm sketching just to kind of get my bearings straight. And then I think what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to move into something a little more on better quality paper. But for now, um, because I'm quite literally drawing this for the first time, um, I'm just getting my feelers in the water, per se, see if see what starts happening. 
learning as I'm going. Figuring out where I want to take it, what works, what doesn't, what I'll have to remember to do on the next one. I don't know if I like that thumb up or not. Seems like she needs to more tension on that. Like that bow would need to bend more. Maybe the arm needs to go back. Maybe the bow needs to bend more. I know archery is kind of on the rise right now. I have a friend of mine, a buddy of mine, that has really gotten into it. And I've now heard of a couple other folks that I kind of gravitate around that have kind of mentioned an interest so I think is uh it's kind of back I think these things probably go a little bit in cycles I don't think I'm gonna have her be nude so I think I'm gonna have something something giving her a little bit of modesty although she's quite beastie so but maybe she feels like her mortal mortal side wants to still be attractive in some way even though she's pretty beastie. Let's work on this one a little bit, see what I get out of this. So figured this kind of a pose she would be got a lot of I start out with a looser pencil, so I'm getting a lot of pickup here on the side of the hand. I just started sketching I was just grabbed whatever I had there but I was using a softer lead sort of be the moment before she's really lifting. you're all having a good day wherever you are
hand's going to kind of come in here a little bit. Probably grabbing the... Maybe she's got one, one quiver already, already in there. kind of taking a look at uh, some sort of snake bellies. Snake belly. It's kind of sort of larger overlapping shapes. A little bit of her sort of human hips there a little bit and then we kind of Speaking of snakes, I actually had a couple of snakes in my lifetime. Had a rat, a rat snake, corn snake. Got pretty big. Probably got almost six feet long at one point. It was uh, beautiful, really nice markings, but it, it really, like most caged animals, it just kind of breaks your heart a little bit over time. You're like, why is this happening? Why are we doing to these poor creatures? Even though nine times out of ten, he's pretty much just sleeping all the time, but still. But he got these little parasites that started growing on him from some terrarium stuff that I put in there. I mean, it was all oven safe, you know, stuff that had supposedly was safe for the pet. But, you know, all it takes is one little buggy on there, and sure enough, his he ended up getting these little blood suckers all over him, and it was making him anemic, and I ended up giving him back to a pet store. Because after having him for, I don't know, three years or something, it was just, I just couldn't really get him cured up, and I thought they could do a better job. Seems like her shoulders or something need to, her head needs to go back. I don't know, I'm not quite digging this pose 100%. It was neat to hold, though. It's pretty amazing. I think he liked being held, too, right? He sort of got used to me, and he wasn't aggressive at all. But he was a big one. So this fun hair is going to be the most exciting part.
part of doing something like this. Just kind of having fun drawing all these little guys. I think what's the neatest part of this was how her hair, from what I remember, was just clumpy and and you kind of lost near the skull. You'd sort of lose. It just all became like a dark shape. But then you'd see her silhouette was the most impressive thing. kind of dark hair but I like this idea that maybe her hair is kind of shorter or it's up a little bit it's not long hair but you see these little heads that kind of peek out and of course she's got to look pretty mad kind of a frown on her face. I remember feeling like when I saw her as a kid in Clash of the Titans, it was like she was almost athletic, you know? She kind of had to be. So I'll have to figure out something that would work. Shielding. But she lived in this, like, temple. Which she was banished there, I thought, was sort of the... Got to study up on my mythology a little bit more. All right. Does she have something on her arm to guard? A lot of times uh, archers have that little protector sleeve. Would she need one? <laughs> Being a beastie. She seemed pretty tough to me. All right, so just kind of messing around here. See if I can find something that's striking some inspiration, and maybe I'll take this to a bigger drawing. These are just sort of preliminaries, getting some poses down, getting used to the anatomy. Um, again, haven't done any of this or drawn any of this before, so this is just probably some sort of pattern here. Something really kind of wicked would be cool. So she's sort of the side of her, her body.
All right. Oh, probably a quiver of some sort where she keeps other arrows. Which I'm assuming would maybe have to come our way a little bit, so maybe you have to change the perspective on that. All right, well, I don't want to spend forever working on something that's just a rough. So I think um, now that I've got some sort of preliminary drawings going on, let's, let's work a little bit on some compositions. And I had just sort of was thinking, getting something out of my head here. I want to refine this a little bit more. Just working up sort of a design. It's good to always have a plan, a sense for where you're going, and before you invest a bunch of time in something that uh, you want to know is gonna has been worked out. You don't want to kick yourself later for not having experimented a little bit more. So I'm figuring this would be a little bit. I want something a little bit at this this angle, right? I like this angle kind of crossing with the bow. Her hand sort of up here, maybe she's at this this angle. Which we're not sure that's really a like a horizon line thing or if she's moving to reach around something, like maybe she's actually trying to So be sort of in front of her like this. So we'd see that face. Remember that the whole thing with Medusa is if you make eye contact with her, you turn to stone. So maybe she's got some like fierce looking eyes as she's looking at you. And she's aiming at the same time. So whether she's going to get you with an arrow or whether she's going to catch you looking at her. I like that. That's pretty dynamic. I'm sure, maybe we catch that tail slooping around a little bit so you'd see the other end of her helps break open the negative space here. All snakes rattle their tail, by the way, not just rattlesnakes. They just happen to have more of a loud rattle. Actually, my little guy used to rattle his little tail too whenever I had to put a pinky in there, as they call them. So maybe this would be like, kind of like. I was just thinking to myself just now, a buddy of mine that is into archery and martial arts, been studying his whole life, um, is also really afraid of snakes too. So that was kind of interesting. How is it that Medusa is an archer and she's afraid of snake, or <laughs> and she's a snake? So I guess would he be like, "Hmm, that's awesome. She's a great archer, but ooh, she's a snake. I can't watch." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Snakes never really scared me as much. I think spiders and small bugs that are black that leave a very bad sting scare me more than things that slither.
it's so cool the way that they move. How could it not be interesting, you know? And you watch their their layers of scales like weave in and out. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Would the arrow tip be there? So she's gonna get you with the arrow. It's not bad. Kind of dig in there. If you're just joining in, yeah, we're we're drawing Medusa today just for fun. I had not really idea. Originally, I thought I might do something else, but I just felt like I wanted to do something off topic today and just something random. And I was kind of thinking about mythology and I was thinking it should be fun. So there's one. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Sort of cleverly hides the rest of the body, you know. It should be sort of off screen here. Um, dynamic composition, like the angle of the bow. Her body's kind of coming at an angle, and then the tail kind of loops us back around. So it's kind of moving this way, but then loops back around like this. This would be good. Could be room for something else, maybe. This would be a player card. We're doing some fun uh, trader cards in my uh, digital painting class. So we're having a lot of fun doing creatures and putting them on cards and stuff. Maybe this would be her. Her game card, her insignia logo, Medusa. I like that. That's not bad. Maybe we could try another one here, just so you can say you did. Try a couple. Never good to settle for your first idea. What else could we do? So thinking back over here. So one is to have her kind of doing something where she's literally holding the arrow here. Um, one is that she's a little more pensive. You know, one thing I was noticing that, that could be a good thing or not a good thing is that the, the string, when, a, when an archer's holding that string back, you know, or or sort of like this, is that it, you're covering the face, right? And that's a great thing, that it really focuses in on that one eye, dialing in that accuracy, but it does kind of hide her face overall. So now I'm thinking maybe I should try and do something that maybe she doesn't have it up, like more down. I think that's where I was thinking here, like if she was had it, in her arms and sort of maybe has a, you know, an arrow pulled out, but it, she isn't aiming yet. Like she's just got it ready. So how could I adapt that? And how could I make this interesting? I like the idea of, of a bow kind of crossing in front of us like this compositionally. And I like the idea of maybe a, her hand holding here. And then sort of bicep, her arm. So she's holding it down like this and then maybe there's an arrow here. A little more slender build. And then I like the idea that maybe her her head is up here. Shoulders kind of like, uh, so maybe her mouth is open, kind of gaping open. And she's got that sort of like, like she's even shocked that you're present. You're even there, like, how dare you? 
come into my domain. She's got her snakies alert. Maybe we see her from the side a little bit more, so we're getting... She's got this arm back. She's holding that. Ooh, that's kind of cool too. Look at that. It's kind of rule of thirds. And then we could have that tail. We're going to have to do the tail thing. Sorry, guys. That's just going to have to happen. It's just, it's too good not to have that coming back into play. You gotta do the snaky tail here. And she's a snake, right? So here she is. Maybe her butt's behind there, so. She's got this arm down on the bow. We see a little bit of the quivers. She'd pull from the same side that she's putting the bow, so that's a right handed thing. So I don't know how much the quiver would show here, but. Might see it a little bit tucked in here. And then we gotta do a sense of the temple, so do I do I put some sort of arches back here? Some sort of revel. Background, don't wanna make it too much, I don't know. It's a little, it's creating too much parallel shapes here. Not sure. It's a good one too. Like that. Do a little cleanup on these edges. When composition is at play, you got to know your what the playing field is. So if you're doing thumbs and sketches, you've got to make sure you delineate what that border is going to be. Um, very, very important. So maybe the ground gets a little darker as it's coming closer here. She's kind of in the shadows. I can make her eyes glow, much like they, so her hair is kind of dark. Maybe even her body's kind of dark. She's got a little bit of temple lighting on her coming from the side, so she's got a core shadow running down this edge of the body here. Maybe there's sort of secondary light source kind of shining up from this direction. Her silhouette would backlight her, so this would all be sort of illuminated in the background. Maybe I could thin out the temple. Hmm. Where did we go? Arrgh. Having fun. This is the most fun right here. A little bit of the temple back there. Maybe there's sort of a, a feeling of some archways kind of breaking open that space. It depends. You know, if I'm going to do this 
as a more finished illustration piece or whether I'm just going to do like a drawing. You know, if I'm spending that much time on the background, then it becomes a little bit more like something I'm going to put more time into. But I think I really just wanted to do a line drawing, maybe ink it um, on some toned paper. So not doing too much of a background, I think, is... Good. Hmm. I guess I could really keep the string thin so that it doesn't impede the face too much. Seems like she needs a little more action. All right, we'll do one more, one more. Then I'll make my decision. It's just a fun one, just a fun afternoon of drawing and designing. Hope you're all doing well out there. Thanks for joining. Chat's open, by the way. If you do feel like chatting it up, I like to keep it open. Don't be shy. Appreciate the visits. Also want to remind people, uh, I have a Discord channel I'm doing, so if you look at my uh, information on my Twitch homepage there, you'll see that... Um, there's a link and an invite to my Discord, so um, if you want to keep the conversation going there, I'd love to. You can also get notifications when I'm going live, um, so you can come hang out if you want to come draw with someone to make, do some creativity with, whatever your projects are. We can do it together. So she's very, if I had any change to make in this one it would be that she's very far to the left with a lot of open space so for something that's a single drawing we need to get her back towards the middle a little bit so maybe maybe this time we get her back in the middle Ooh, that's good maybe we could do this So she's maybe looking not at us, but she's looking a little bit three-quarter view there. There's some intense eyebrows. She's looking and she's scowling. I like the idea that she was maybe once beautiful, so it kind of makes you have a little empathy, like something happened that she became this horrid creature. Tells a little bit more of her story. I feel like at one point she was young and beautiful, but then was robbed of her youth, became a witch. So this is this one maybe takes us back to something like this a little bit more, except I like the idea that maybe the head the head is turning this way. She's heard something. I hear you. I will find you. Sorry, I'm listening to some creepy music. What the heck am I listening to here? Oh, <laughs> Jurassic Park this time, not five. She's got this kind of scowl and these very sinister looking eyebrows. got teeth. You got to make these noises, folks. That's the only way you can do it. Absolute requirement. Sorry, I'm off screen. Got to pay attention what the heck I'm doing. So yeah, so she's looking 
a little bit off. Yes, we're working on a Medusa if you're just joining. Um, just was kind of sketching here first, working out a couple designs, learning a little bit about the pose, the anatomy. <sighs> just kind of learning. Um, first time drawing those characters. So um, now kind of formulating something that I could work into a more finalized drawing. So let's see. The idea that her shoulders are up here. And then maybe her arm. It's here. And we got some quite a bit of foreshortening happening. So her arms more on the stiff side, maybe here a little bit. She's holding this bow, which doesn't have to be the, the main thing. So we could keep that off a little bit off screen. Sorry to the archery fans. Let's see. So her arms kind of back a little, but she's got a little straight seems like maybe she needs to be kind of like she's so her back's kind of coming here we'll do a little bit of what we did in the first one That's not bad. One little trick though, she's center, but her line of sight is back. So it seems like we need to maybe adjust the border a little bit. So I'm gonna redraw this border. and open things up just a little bit more on the left. Okay. Take away a little bit of this. So it gives her a little more open space. She's looking back. So we're getting something a little bit more along this line line of sight bringing us back, but the bow is lowered now a little bit. So we open up the space. This allows us to see her a lot more. The one thing that they did really well in Clash of the Titans that I loved is they use the shadows to play off your um, imagination. Hey, Creature Brush. Ron, what's up, my man? <laughs> Thanks for joining, buddy. Doing a little Medusa action here today. Um, was kind of in 
in a Clash of the Titans kind of mood this morning. We have a fantastic artist in the house here if you're joining us right now. Creature Brush. Go follow him. He is on Instagram. Check him up. He's a fantastic concept artist. And we're old buddies from way back. Ron, feel free to drop in your any links or anything you want into the chats, man. Go follow Ron at Creature Brush. Ron, I got to make sure I get it right. If you got it, drop it. If not, I'll see if I can. Let's see here. Creature brush, everybody. Creature brush underscore RK. Check him out. My old pal from school. Awesome concept artist. Great stuff. Great stuff. Thanks for swinging by, Ron. Yeah, no problem, man. Anytime, anytime. So, yeah, we're just, just kind of thinking about doing a drawing here. Nothing... Nothing too invested, I think. Maybe just a drawing, maybe a little inking if we get that far. I don't know if I'm going to get that far, but... Um, yeah, Medusa of some sort. So we did a little preliminary sketching here just to kind of get some anatomy parts right, start thinking about poses, just some little details. This is the first time I've drawn Medusa and I don't know, <laughs> 40 years maybe. Um, so now we're kind of looking at some layout designs for... Maybe like a card or just for a drawing. Hey, no pro no problem, man. I'd love to see your process well. I know you as well. I know you share a lot on your Instagram, so I, I'm always watching you and loving to see what you're up to. You did that fantastic uh cityscape the other day. That was impressive, dude. That was your scale, your use of scale was just amazing. Love that piece. That was impressive. So we were just talking about, I was just saying that one of the things that um, I loved about Clash of the Titans and um, Ray Harryhausen's uh, animation and creature designs um, in the film was how they used, for that Medusa, you know, they had her almost entirely in silhouette. So you, you really covered a lot of those claymation details that were probably a little rough in some places by just having her eyes glow and seeing mostly her silhouette. But it also kind of kept that anticipation of the darkness and not, not knowing for sure what it is that you're seeing. And I think um, all the great storytelling illustrators use this a lot. Um, but I remember want, it's like you want to see it in detail. It was, the same, it was kind of the Freddy Krueger syndrome, right? For all of you people, uh, maybe Gen Xers, um, who grew up watching Freddy Krueger. And it was like, just you just had to figure out what Freddy looked like. And it took us three movies before we could really see him. <laughs> but it was great because you just could not wait to see the next one to see if they would reveal a little bit more. And it was just... Uh, that anticipation and is is such a powerful tool to get the audience's eye. So I just just love that. Um, and I'm thinking I would rather do something like that here, where we're we're maybe going to put a lot of this in shadow, so that you only get a little a little glimpse of some texture, a little glimpse of some detail here. This arm seems awfully straight. I kind of have to say, I don't, I don't know if I like the way that this arm is, is straight because, you know, that's the same thing I was noticing over here. But if a person really is getting ready to put tension on a bow, you can't put tension on a bow with a bent arm. It just doesn't work. Post and lentil. It's got to be 90 degrees. It's It's got to be stiff. you got to lock that elbow. So 
it's sort of that moment just before you lock the arm where she's kind of holding it. Um, I don't know. It just seems like it, maybe the arm would be slightly, maybe I could make the arm slightly bent. Like it's not, she hasn't quite put the full tension on it yet. She hasn't pulled it back. So there could be a little bend. That looks better. A little bit more like this. And of course our arm back here is sort of moving moving in this way. We got this nice curve working through. Secondary action here. Kind of moving this way. Good animation stuff too. A little bit of our little snaky heads kind of hanging around. I feel like maybe it needs a little exploration for what those those heads are going to... I don't know if it's worth it. I kind of like the idea that it's shorter, though. Anything that accentuates her neck, this is going to make her look more feminine, right? You give her a narrow neck, you show her a nice neckline, it's going to make her look younger and, and more feminine, where if you... If it's all blocked in, she's she's not going to look as feminine. So I think a shorter hairstyle will look more youthful, even though she was probably an old witch by this point. But I want sort of beautiful, but uh, <sighs> she had some bad work done, you know? It's awful. It's terrible. Hey, tea break. Tea break, everybody. If you haven't done it, stop. <laughs> Have a sip of tea. Today it's Rose Puchan. Thanks to my wife who introduced me to this beautiful tea. Mm. It's so great, you know. We were talking about this earlier, but I've had some rose teas that were uh, very grandma-like. Um, <laughs> nothing against grandma. But that's what I think of was my grandmother's house when I think of rose, dried flowers, that kind of stuff. I don't know about you guys, but what your grand grandmothers were like, sweet as they are, love them to death. But um, but this one doesn't have that grandma quality, which I think is good because I love my grandma, but I don't want to drink drink tea from her her old dusty house. So. Um, <laughs> This is nice because it's more citrusy with like notes of rose. So you get that rose flavor without being like you're sucking on a mothball or something in the closet, you know? I like it. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Good stuff, though. Also helps to have good tea companies too. Um, and my wife likes this one. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of it off the top of my head. That's in England. Uh, we went to their shop when we were there, actually, because um, we took a trip and a couple years back, and we went to their tea shop. Amazing. Um, it's like great tea shouldn't burn or irritate. Okay, here we go. All right, little product placement. Fortnum and Mason. And of course, you know, all you great tea lovers out there probably are like, oh yes, of course. Uh, Fortnum and Mason, of course, you know, some of the best in the world. But um, this was new to me. But, but they're Rose Puchong. There it is, folks. Get some. Classic world teas. This stuff is really classy. And all their teas don't bite. Not too bitter. Too bitter. So. Okay. Well, this is it. I mean, I like this best. I mean, it's it's a question of what are you going to do with this drawing, right? Um, I love the action. I love the action here. The anticipation. Good. Dynamic. Kind of Dutch angle-ish, although it has more to do with her movement than than where we are. But the bow, the hand covering the face, not a great way to show a creature's face. Um, number two, 
a solid classic card design, um, but is going to require a little bit more negative space back here uh, to show off the environment. And I don't know that in this kind of a smaller drawing like this that I really want to do that. Maybe do that later, a la Frazetta or something like that. Um, so awesome, awesome. Or this one, which I think could be done nicely as a drawing. Why? Because we're still getting some really nice negative shapes back here. It's, it's centered, so it doesn't need to have a whole lot of background behind it for what I want to do here. I mean, I could definitely put one in there or incorporate, a, adapt it a little bit more for something I want to take it further into a painting, which maybe I will later after I'm done. But this way I could leave it as a drawing and it would be cool enough or the right distance away where we can see some detail, but not feeling like we're having to conquer the whole mountain here in the background. And it gives us a nice dynamic look. She's looking off to the, our right, her left. Um, she's sort of got, you know, contrapposto kind of pose, the hips and shoulders kind of working in opposite direction chin down, she's got determination, she's looking, you know, her, her axes are kind of turned to get some nice dynamic poses as much as you can do with a snake um, on a human torso. And then, oh yeah, we were trying to get in that tail, that tail back in there somewhere, so I don't know where I would do it because this is going to have to be the quiver, right? This is going to have or have to be the arrows and maybe her quiver of arrows is back is back here. Right, so she's got this. Maybe there's a few more sticking up behind her, her shoulders here, or maybe they could be kind of sticking up on this side, which would probably look a little better. But I don't want to steal the show from the snakes. The snaky snakes is what it's all about. So don't want to don't want to pull that away. She's probably going to have her. little strap here for her quiver around the back. We could still go with kind of silhouetted darkness here around the back. And that tail. Because we have to have enough of her to know that her lower half is a snake, right? So do we extend it? Do we open it up a little bit? Maybe we do that. Give her just a little bit more range. If I open this up, then we can really begin to see her snake lower half. And it would give us a little more room to show the arrow and maybe a little bit of the, the tail looping around here. It's almost like if we open up the negative space enough there. So maybe that tail kind of creeps back in here. Maybe we could even show a little bit more of a snake body behind her a little bit. I don't know. It would imply it's pretty high off the ground, so I don't know if that's possible. Ugh. Do we go lower? No. Can't go too low. So maybe it's just a little, little sense of her snake body below, and then that tail kind of creeping up here. All right. That's not bad. This works as a drawing by itself. Kind of fun, shows off the anatomy, but at the same time. Give her some sort of like flames to cover her bits. Not exactly sure how they attach, but hey, it's mythology, so how am I supposed to know who designed their outfits? So yeah, we get some quivers sticking up there. This is cool. I can dig this. This is why you sketch first, folks, so you don't run into design problems later. Okay.
So let's spend a little time. Let's move up to the next size paper that we're thinking about. Stretch it out, by the way. Stretch the fingers. Always good. Check the stream. See how our health is doing here. Hmm. We're getting a little bounce going on here. Not as healthy as I would like. But seems like we're still making it. Things a little choppy. You guys give me any feedback there? Is it choppy out there? It says excellent, but OBS is giving me a little, giving me the finger a little bit. So what happens when you have your son playing uh, Minecraft in the other room <laughs> with his Zoom open? And he's probably streaming more followers than I am. Okay, we're also a little dark in here. Oh my god. Sorry. Didn't know it was so dark, but I guess it, it kind of is. Do I tempt the fate of messing with the camera? Or do I let it be dark? Didn't realize we were so dark in here. We could lighten up a little bit, maybe. Just a little bit. Gotta be careful. This camera's given me a little, little business lately. There we go. I guess overall my room got a little darker as sun's kind of going down here. That's probably enough for you to see though. All right, hopefully it helps a little bit without tweaking up the drawing. The other thing I was having a problem is getting a white balance and having the drawing stand out enough. Okay, so for the moment, I'm going to put those there and we're going to switch over to some brown paper. Yes, folks. You love the brown paper. Um, why? because you don't have to spend so much time shading the middle ground. Shading the middle ground takes a lot of time. Got to work out all those values. You work on toned paper, you're instantly knocking out the majority of the picture, which is the middle values, and working more in just a little bit of the highlights and a little bit of the shadows. So toned paper can be awesome. Um, this is one of my more favorite brands uh, of toned paper. I, I like Strathmore, but um, I found this one a number of years ago, Kona. Uh, American-made paper, um, really good premium quality. I got it for 10 bucks discount. Um, it was a teacher supply thing. So, um, But I love this stuff. Medium surface, pretty durable, and the size is pretty good for what you get. Like in this one, Kansas City, Missouri, 11 by 14, 88 pounds. So it's got some decent weight to it, um, which is good. It's funny, it, wow, I didn't realize how green that looks on screen. Um, I think rather than leave it in the pad, I'm going to tear this piece out so that I could tape it up and work a little more middle of the, the middle of my screen here. All right, so let's see. All tape would be good. So let's see. How are we doing there? I'll tear off the top edge later, but for now I'll kind of work in here.
about that. Tape my edge up here. So I'm looking at my thumb. I'm going to keep this kind of handy. Preliminary sketches nearby, but I'll put my thumb closer. So I'm kind of looking at this, scaling it up. So we're sort of a little bit off screen here. So we're down here in the lower left, kind of looking at that. Got preliminary drawings of our Medusa chilling up here. I might have to move this one a little farther up just so I can All right. So now this is all about sort of translating what we started down here into the new space that we're working on. So I'm going to switch pens, although I don't know if I'm going to stay with this, but it's it's kind of a little bit harder, a little more sharper just to block in until I'm ready to commit, and then I could go in with a bit more detail. How's everybody doing? We doing all right? You with me? All right, well, don't be afraid to give a holler if you want to. It's an open chat. It's always good to draw and hang out with friends, so thanks for popping by. It's baseball season, by the way. Um, this is not a Warriors hat. Love Warriors, too, but this is actually um, the Inchun Waverins hat, which is a Waverin is like a dragon for a little uh, hometown spirit. Uh, my wife and I visited Korea um, to visit family and um, some distant relatives, and we went to hometown of Incheon, and they have their own baseball team. So um, Korea has some pretty great baseball leagues, and so I was excited to be able to bring some love back. And I love love the Waverins, and I love baseball season. My Giants are doing awesome. Buster Posey is doing awesome. Good to see him back in the pocket. Um, you know, this whole last year with COVID, a lot of the players elected not to play, of which case I believe he was one of them. But this year he's back after a year off and first time up to the plate over the fence. So very nice. Good, good. Ron, what are you drawing over there? You drawing with me? You working on some stuff? Some business? <laughs> okay here we go so let's see so she's sort of gonna top out probably you gotta figure I'm gonna probably give it a clean cut up here so she'll probably top out someplace over here we'll give ourselves the head Also, you know, one other thing I was just thinking here that might be really cool is if, you know, she, I don't want her to look like she's posing too much. It's more like she's looking like. Um, one thing I remember watching Having a Snake, as I was talking about earlier, is when snakes track something, they do that thing where, like, when their prey moves, they move. And until their prey moves, they don't move. So it's like when the prey moves, they move, then they move, then they move, <laughs> and they and they get they close the distance with each one. So I kind of like the idea that maybe she's it looks like she's kind of looking like almost peering, peering around. So maybe if I turn her head a little bit, so we're getting a little bit of the side, but it's like she's. She's looking like she's going to find it. I want to go crazy or nothing, but just maybe a little bit of the... She's looking around. She's going to get you. She's, gonna, she's looking for you. Like she's sleuthing a little bit, like... 
like snakes do. I'm going to give her slightly pointed ears. Can't say that that's historically accurate, but um, I like the idea that she's kind of of she's kind of a demon now, so she's of the demon world. So we'll, we'll she'll be looking, kind of peering a little bit with those eyes. And it's going to be all about the eyebrows, right? She's got to have those, those sinister, brooding-looking eyebrows. She's going to get you, right? And she's, she's kind of lizardy now a little bit, so she's, she's got that creepy, creepy look, little brooding brow. But got to be careful. I want her still to be, to be. She was for her former self. She was beautiful. So I, she's got to be a little bit monsterish, but at the same time, a little bit something in her is her, her of her youth, of her younger days. So she's got these eyes. And she's going to open them up. We'll probably have to make them glow. That's the only way you're going to know she's Medusa. Otherwise, she'll just be some some archer, which is fine. Love the archery. But she's got to be staring you down with the, the eyes. It's all in the eyes. Creepy. They'll be giving off light, too, so she'll be kind of... And she's probably snarling. She's pissed. How much do we open her mouth? Do we make her... down on the sides, probably something like that. Snarling, she's got some demon teeth. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. Digging that. Yeah, that inking stuff, man. I uh, good inking. There's a there's a difference between, you know, okay inking and the art of inking, right? Um, you, you think Glapion, you know, um, Scalera, these are some of the comic guys out there now who are doing some fantastic inking work. I mean, there's really an art to it. It's, it's, it's almost like science. It's organized. It's like a system. It's a system. And, you know, there's, there's your own personal style of it, but then there's like, being consistent. And I think what's important, what I notice about inking is that you got to be consistent. You got to be consistent about it. And it's the consistency, the system that you have that really is when inking becomes that kind of a craft of its own. I mean, there's general shading inking, but then there's Inking is a craft, and those guys, um, they have their craft down so well um, that it, that they make it look seamless and easy, but it is not. So it depends on what, what you're after, you know? Ooh, I like that she has this kind of longer neck. You know, I'm putting a little bend in her now. She's not so straight as she was there. But I love that it's giving her this this more fantastic 
pose. So I'm picturing her arm. She's probably kind of bent over a little bit. Ooh, that's cool. Look at that. So maybe she's kind of slouched over a little bit. This is her neck and then her shoulders kind of curling, curving up here and then her back. And that means that this arm Might be a lot. Let's see. I gotta move this arm out a little bit. There's her clavicle kind of comes down here. I think this shoulder. Sorry about that, guys. Add some background visiting. So let's see. 
and bicep. Just kind of working out these muscles here. A lot of foreshortening here. So she's a little thinner now, more turn, crouched over, but she's lean. She's leaner this time, which I like. A little more athletic, maybe a little more feminine. A lot of foreshortening here. So the arm's got to come down. Arms going behind. There's a little bit of a, a bend here. Okay, now we start into those hips. You know, I haven't really tried to do this, but maybe I could try to uh, zoom in for you. How would that grab you? See if I can get in a little tighter. See how this works. If I go here, Say this and we could zoom in a bit. Uh huh? Uh huh? How about them apples, huh? Just a little bit. Not so far away. So yeah. A little bit of muscle there. Tricep probably starting a little bit higher. Kind of curving in. Extensor group. The reflexors are on the bottom, extensors are on the top for those of you playing the home game. This hand over here will be probably holding the strings, right? So that means this arm is going to come down here and be holding the bow, which would probably mean should probably be making a fist. May have to move those fingers up a bit. We better block in that bow 
Now here I was picturing a little more of an angle. So I'm relaxed, I relaxed the arm a little bit here on this one. So you gotta figure that the bow is probably Hands gotta move away, bring the hand down this way, and I can show my fingers. Okay. There's a lower ab, the hip widens out a little bit. A little bit of a booty there, but I want to leave a little bit of signs of her anatomy from before. So, so let's say that the curvature of this is important because this is sort of showing that her arc, her back is arched, arched a little bit more. So you can't straighten that out too much, or you're going to lose the bend. So she's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a here, and she's she's tipping forward. She's got her shoulders kind of curved in a little bit, so we know that she's got a deltoid coming here over the top, and the tricep, lower tricep. So we see her back kind of sneak out. Something like that. Move up a little bit here. Pretty good. Coming along. a little higher up here. Got to remember, we've got this kind of axis line running through here, right? And she's a little lower here. So a little hip shoulder axis action there, which means we have to keep wherever this ends up, this has to be higher. Keep your volume. Sometimes you can draw little volume lines to help you out. This arm's a little higher, so we've got one a little higher than the other when it comes to her, her chest there. but that's because this shoulder has lowered. It's a higher shoulder in the pose, but, but she's relaxing the arm, so it's kind of countering. So 
a little bit of angle to her ribs there. Okay, that's not bad. It's a good negative shape there. All right, how are we doing? Pretty good. Later, Ron. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Creature Brush, everyone, check them out. Fantastic artist. Creature Brush underscore RK is his, is his handle over on uh, Instagram. Okay. Just cutting back. I'm digging this. Give her a little bit of her hips back. And then we start that, that rib cage. Sort of, you know, maybe we're seeing some ribs there. Probably not, but we put the anatomy there in place. Okay. The bow's in place, so we're going to have that bow kind of cut through here. Bring it gets a little wider and then a little narrower. So that's good. And, you know, compositionally, like what we were talking about over here, um, we're talking about something that's going to be cut off, you know, probably a little narrower than what I have it, which is good. It's good to have extra paper. If I need to expand, I can, but for the most part, I'm thinking that this will probably crop someplace here, right? Kind of a longer piece, maybe. So that would mean that if she, her snaky self Move this up a bit. If her sneaky self is kind of moving in here, and I'm sure she's got layers, and some part of this goes off, then Some part of this is going to come back in. So I like that. That seems pretty reasonable to me. So there will be her sort of tail. which will, I'm not sure, quite exactly sure how we're going to show that tail <laughs> wagging, except maybe, maybe we show it slightly in a couple, couple positions. That might work. All right. Now I think we're we've we've done enough to give ourselves permission to
to come back up here and address the head now. Proportions, I think we're doing pretty good. Her head's a little big and, you know, here's the thing. Her head's going to get even bigger, I think, um, because we're going to be adding those snakes. So maybe I pull the jaw in a little bit. Start small because I know that those that head, that head is going to get a little bit larger. Start coming a little smaller. As a benchmark. Tricep, forearms. We're going to bring her arm a little bit, her hand a little bit lower. So she's... Got these fingers here which are holding the strings. And this one's holding the Let's go. Let's do it. Let's hit that rose pooch on one more time. Maybe a refill. Whew, good stuff. All right. Gonna stay a little bit looser now because we're trying to get the, the snakes to have some natural curl to them. Some snake belly there.
snakes walk her uh, tails over here waddling in the air so I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a border just so I can kind of remind myself how open this is gonna be and of course if I need to I can always go back and go wider if I need to but again kind of looking here opening up the space a little bit in that vicinity and then the top being probably There we go. Looks pretty good. Never underestimate the power of a straight edge. Can give us a little bit of that angle that we need. It's curving ever so slightly. Everybody doing okay out there? Good, good. A little suggestion of some scales. Again, planning to ink this rather than leave it as tone whether I'm going to get to that today I do not know I'm I'd like to maybe take another swipe at this when when I have a dedicated amount to the time to the inking because I like the way things are turning out here and I'm not in for the full the long haul tonight so this has been a good a good session Have a little fun with the snakes. Let's get a little sharp on her. So the idea is that there's this kind of mass, right, of darkness that is around her. So I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a map by darkening in some of these sort of snakes. Not sort of snakes, I guess they are snakes. kinds of sort of overlapping slithering going on. But she's got a good, strong silhouette, which is key here. So the question will be, where is that lighting going to put these shadows? It's 
So I'm going to give myself a little bit of help. You guys are doing okay out there, getting your work done as well. I appreciate you joining me today. I had fun. This ended up being a pretty productive afternoon. I hope you were able to get some work done in our time together. arm I have to be careful because I don't want this edge of the breast to conflict with that that line there so I have to watch that a little bit so let's see arms coming up here seems like maybe this this arm needs to come back in just a little bit more overlap that way I can tuck this arm more carefully under here. So that would mean that this, this, the string from the bow is going to go right through that finger. And down below also means there's probably going to be an arrow going right through there. Through here. Maybe a little straighter. Back on this line a little bit. Gotta watch that hip line that was her other half, right? So,
Let's do this for a second. that'll be okay. Bit of help there. Shoulders, so she's kind of doing that dip, dipping towards the middle like she's hunching over a little bit. Again, we're following this curve, following this curve, giving her a little bit more She's a little more leathery, a little more sinewy, but. Give her a little textural edge over here. So we can just see a little bit of that edge will be nice. It'll remind us that she's got that scaly, scaly thing going on. Just a little bit of a silhouette. A bit of the dragon in her. Help us out with some dimension there. Okay. All right, guys, looking cool. Hope yours are coming out good on your end over there. About ready to wrap this up today. I was gonna tell you that you, I got my Discord channel going now, so um, if you're interested in continuing the discussion and keeping in touch and wanna talk some more or get some ideas or, um, I do have my Discord channel, which I am hoping to Again, further the discussion, continue more of this uh, outside of the stream. You can leave messages there. We can start the chat going. Um, if you have some pieces you want feedback on, um, I'd be willing to do that. So check out uh, the Discord invite, which again is in my About section there at, uh, when you come to my Twitch homepage. Or uh, if you're catching this on the replay on the YouTube um, I'll have a link there as well, so you can join up, and uh, yeah, maybe we can answer some more questions, or if, yeah, you want some feedback or anything, let's just keep the discussion going, you know, it's good stuff, and it's it's good for me, it's good for you, um, let's, let's build our own little community here, I think it'd be fun. I enjoy talking to people, I am a teacher, so I am used to talking and helping people, on my 21st year of teaching, can you imagine it's been that long? I cannot. It's insane how time really flies when you, <laughs> when you get a little bit older. So, um, not to say I'm old, but I'm getting up there. Um, but I'd love to give anybody feedback that's open to it. I love talking design. I love talking um, art. So... By all means, check it out. I also try to post there when I'm going live, so you can always get notifications if you want to join. Um, so it'll be a good, good way to stay in touch with all things that are going on. And I think our girl is 
going to be doing pretty well. I think what I'll do is next time, we'll save a little something for next time, a little taste. But next time, um, perhaps, uh, I will ink this. I just don't think I could do it here, and unfortunately, I can't, I can't go much longer today. But maybe next time, maybe uh, next Saturday, uh, maybe I'll jump and do one Friday night, or um, I'll come back and I will ink this which is really, I think, my intention on this piece was to, was to ink it. So I'd, I'd love to take this one slowly and do a good job and build some values. And I think it would be a good one to watch and a good one to check. So maybe you can come back next weekend, a couple days, about a week from now. Um, and let's meet up again. And we'll do the inking half of this, and it'll be fun. I'm just giving myself a map now so that next time I can dive right into the inking part. But we went from sketch to concept to tight drawing, ready for an ink. So we'll save that little fun thing for next time. Again, if you want to find me, you can get me on Instagram at, at Trey Gallagher. You can also... Uh, catch me. You can see up there in the corner. I guess it would be uh, right up there. <laughs> you can see my addresses if you want to try to catch me on any of those places. Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Uh, Art by Trey Gallagher on Facebook. My website, of course, TreyGallagher.com. Um, I'm building up my store right now, so I actually should probably have maybe some things to offer there. I don't know, a month or two or so, getting getting my images together. But um, I have some things I'm looking to unload too. So maybe if you're interested in that, you could find find something there. Medusa. Ray Harryhausen. The man. The man responsible. For me, probably in large part becoming an artist. Um, those early fantasy movies and stop motion was just captivated me, as I know it did many of you. So, to Ray. And Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. It's all about the power of not showing them too much. So I will have to decide between now and our next time how much of this I am actually going to end up revealing. Because even though I've got quite a bit of articulation uh, worked out here. I'm thinking very heavily about maybe less is more. So how much light I will put on her, how much I'll keep in the shadows. More snaky tails. I'll have to think about that and decide next time. Maybe work a little bit on a, a little bit of a pattern, maybe, on her side, too. What kind of a snake pattern would she have? We will have to see. Tune in next time. Art stream with Trey Gallagher. To find out. Hmm. 
little bit of cleanup now. Just cleaning up. Clean the uppy. All right. Plan for that signature, so let's go ahead, tail her probably down here somewhere. All right, let's go full screen here, take us out. And we'll back the zoom out. Yeah, look at that. Not bad, not bad at all. Digging it. It's going to be a good one and a good one to ink. So tune in next time, guys. Let's hang out some more. Get some of that work done. And we'll have some more fun. Because a day of drawing is more fun than most things. Let's bring a little light back into that earring. I'll have to figure out some schmancy earring. Seems like she deserves, like she would wear gauges. She would definitely wear gauges. But, I don't know, maybe she needs something kind of fun and decorative that would give her a little bit of shininess. Maybe she's got multiple rings up the ear. I think those little details would be great. These little lines are going to be important because these are going to show the form as she's sort of slowly converting. A little bit of her ribs there. She's hungry. She needs to eat. And I kind of like these little cups. I have to do something kind of maybe decorative here, like I don't know what they'd be if they'd, they'd be kind of like shield like, protector, something like that. And then I have to figure out how they're going to attach. If they're stuck on, are they kind of like pasties? <laughs> or are they. I mean, I could do what I want, right? It's not 100% described in all that detail, all those ancient stories. It's time to make it a little bit your own. I don't know how much of this is, let's see. Ooh, 
so maybe some more a little more of those kind of scaly edges Scaly edges, always good. Some sort of pattern. Maybe I'll figure out a little bit more pattern, do a little more research. I'm not sure how much of that would actually show at the bottom anyway, but it's there if I need it. So, um, fingerprints. Hold on here. Drop my ruler. My straight edge. So yeah, we're looking at probably something in this area, maybe. I don't wanna go too dark, because if I do wanna go farther, I can, but we're looking at something probably like that. All right, guys. You start out with something in your brain. Start composing some ideas. You work through the trials. You don't stop with your first one. You keep pushing that design farther and farther. And then you take it to something that you like. And then it gets even better when you go to actual. So, um, have fun. This stuff is the best. Draw, draw, draw. Have a great week. Good luck on all your creative projects out there. Be good to yourself. Give yourself the time you need. Be good to yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. Be kind to other people. Give people a second chance. Give them a break. Give them a little slack. Benefit of the doubt. And then be kind to our earth. Let's take care of this. We only got one. Okay. Thanks for hanging out. Have a great week and I'll catch you next time where we'll take Medusa here a little bit farther. Okay. Take care. Have a great week. Bye-bye.